Speaking exclusively to the Yorkshire Post, Yorkshire's counter-terror chief has admitted that Yorkshire faces an unprecedented threat of deadly terror attacks. I love Yorkshire. I mean, I'm a Lancashire lad at heart, but you know, every time I crossed the border across the moors, I felt a connection. Yorkshire epitomises the north. It's got great food, traditional brick houses and cottages, beautiful countryside, friendly people and cracking pubs, but now it's known for something else. You know, I remember reading about the town of Savile in Yorkshire. It hit headlines just a few years ago when census data was revealed showing that only 48 out of 4,033 people in the town were white British. You'll probably remember that famous image of a woman in a burqa selling ice cream, halal certified, I'm sure, from an ice cream van. This is a Muslim enclave in Britain. The locals have been totally replaced, uh, many forced out, and those who are left, well, they're just dreaming about a town when their town was British. It's not complicated, is it? Nobody wants their home transformed. Just imagine if this happened to your hometown. One year it's jamming Jerusalem, church bells ringing on a Sunday, local fates, and community events, a healthy pub culture and happy British families. And the church is gone and a minaret replaces it and you don't hear the church bells anymore, you hear the Islamic call to prayer. You don't see uh, little old Doris walking her dogs in the park anymore, it's Mohammed and his two wives in burqas. And there's no dog! The pubs are gone and everything's just a bit more bleak. I'm sorry but this is alien to us. Many Muslims are thoroughly decent people but I asked, have to ask, what is the benefit of changing a town like this so drastically? What good comes from changing a traditional British town into an Islamic enclave? And am I to believe that the people who live there, most of them actually like us? I mean, many immigrants want to assimilate into our culture and are proud of being Brits, glad to have the chance to raise their kids as Brits. What's the deal here? Why doesn't this group want the same? Instead, they want to turn this British town and the rest of Yorkshire into a replica of the oppressed lands that they fled. And the claims from Yorkshire's counter-terror chief suggest that these people don't really like us. In his interview with the Yorkshire Post, Detective Chief Superintendent Martin Snowden said that West Yorkshire Police had the resources to match the threat, unlike the Met Police who have over 900 officers dedicated to watching hate speech online, but the threat is there and it's substantial. And it comes from lone wolves and Islamists who are using less sophisticated methods to attack people. He said that Yorkshire is facing a particular threat of people using knives and vehicles, just like the Islamist magazine Inspire tells people to do. And according to Snowden, Yorkshire's police workloads has been around a third higher than normal over the last 12 months, and that he expects it to remain that way for quite some time. And you know, I'd really like to see the numbers on the alleged far-right threat that we keep hearing about. It's sad to see the likes of national action on the street, but far-right terrorism, the kind that killed Joe Cox in Batley, is just not on par with the threat that we're facing from Islamists. First off, I'd like to know what the authorities mean when they say far-right. They undoubtedly mean people like me and probably you, when what they really mean is a handful of neo-Nazi LARPers. They tell us four Nazi plots were stopped last year. Well, how many Islamist plots were successful last year and just how many were stopped? The MI5 boss claimed at least nine terror attacks were prevented in the UK between 2016 and 17, and there were four major successful Islamic terror attacks in 17. But if we're talking Alihu Akbar attacks, we need to look at more than just van and gun attacks. We need to go beyond the major attacks that shake the nation. We need to talk about the regular knife attacks in London by allegedly crazy drug addicts who just so happen to be Muslim as well. And what about Islam-inspired acid attacks? What about the brutal rape of young non-Muslim girls? I call this terror too. We have at least 23,000 potential jihadis on the street, and while it's easy for northerners like me who are lucky enough to grow up in a sane part of town to assume that this all happens down south in places like Luton, we have to face up to the fact that huge parts of the north are being hurt by this poison too. Yorkshire's facing a real threat, unfortunately. It's being transformed, and we're being told to celebrate it. It's just like being burgled, and the burglar telling you to smile about it.